Alrighty, this is a review of exact values. And the first thing we're gonna go over are exact values on the unit circle. So when we are finding exact values, the main thing that you've gotta know are those two special right triangles. So if you have something that we have a sine of 30 degrees, I know I'm gonna draw an angle with that reference angle of 30 degrees. So when I draw my triangle, remember your reference angle is always formed with your positive x-axis. So my reference angle is gonna be right here. This is my 30 degrees. And then I remember that if I have those special right triangle ratios memorized, that opposite the 30 is gonna be my side length one, opposite the 60 is gonna be my side length root three, and then my hypotenuse is gonna be two. So now when you think about finding the sine, you can just remember so Katoa, back from geometry. And since it's sine, I need to find my opposite, which opposite of that angle is one, over the hypotenuse is two. So that reference angle sine of 30 degrees is gonna have an exact value of one half. Now remember we also did this in radians or these type of measures and there's three different um, ones that you really need to know, denominators that you need to know. Pi over four is equivalent to 45 degrees. Okay, pi over three is equivalent to 60 degrees and pi over six is equivalent to 30 degrees. And I always remember this because these guys are opposite of what they should be. You think this is small, but it's actually a really big one, so it's 60 degrees. So if I have tangent of three pi over four, I've got to place this on my unit circle so I can figure out signs. So when I look right here, pi over four would be in the first quadrant. So I can always label my graph. We always know this one is zero, and then when 180 degrees across is gonna be pi. And so then halfway in between that is pi over two and halfway in between that would be pi over four. So you can always rename these in the um, type of denominator you're using. So if I had wanted to put this over four, this would be four pi over four, and this one would be two pi over four, which means that three pi over four would fall right in between those two, and this angle right here is three pi over four. Now the other thing we've got to remember though is that my reference angle is always formed with the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and make my triangle right here. And then the angle that's right here, if I figure that out, it'd be 180 minus this, or pi minus this guy, which gives me a pi over four or 45 degree reference angle. So now I can use those special right triangle ratios. I know that opposite, this one would be one, one root two. That one's the nice one. And then I can go ahead and find my tangent. Now the only like difficult thing about this one is the fact that since this guy's in quadrant two, my x coordinate is negative. So when I go ahead and find the tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, I'm going to have one over negative one or just negative one, okay? So again, you have to remember what quadrant we're in. And the other thing that we um, learned with this is that acronym all students take calculus where everything is positive in the first quadrant, only sine is positive in the second quadrant, only tangent is positive in the third quadrant, and only cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. Okay? Last but not least, we had those quadrant border angles, the ones that were on an axis. So if I tried to draw this one, pi would be over here, and then I'm trying to figure out exactly how to draw a triangle there that doesn't make very much sense. So there were two ways we did this. We had the OIO chart, And so this says O, I, O, I, O, U, O, I don't O, I don't O, U. And this always goes in Sokotoa order, so S, C, T on the top. And then we start at zero degrees or zero radians. And then we have 90 or pi over two, 180 or pi, and then 270 or three pi over two. So if I was looking for pi, pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. And then I'd go find the cosine of that and that's negative one. The other way we could think about this is if we named this point, this point on a unit circle would have been negative one, zero. And we remember X always goes with my cosine, which was true in the vectors unit as well. And Y goes with sine. And so since this one was the cosine of pi, I look at my X coordinate and it was negative one. So I got the same answer either way. So that's exact values. The other thing we did with our trig ratios is we found the inverse trig value. So if I was given the ratio, what angle gave me that value? So this is gonna ask you to do a couple of things. You're either gonna find the exact principal inverse value, which is that exact number that your calculator could spit out, and the possible values of x. 
So a general solution or within a certain radius or a certain range. So for this one, the easiest thing to do for these type of guys is to just go ahead and draw your triangle. So if I draw my triangle in here, I have that I'm finding the inverse cosine of negative root three over two. So oh, I'm gonna make this one positive just to make this a little bit nicer for us to begin with. So if I have this ratio right here, I know if I have a positive ratio inside, I'm just gonna draw in quadrant one, make my life a little bit easier. Remember your reference angle is always formed with the x-axis and cosine <clears throat> is gonna be your adjacent side over your hypotenuse. Now you can do your um, Pythagorean theorem right here and figure out what that last side is, or you can recognize that this is a ratio that we know this side would be one, and so that would make this the 30 degree angle. So then when I wanna go ahead and say what the one angle is, the principal inverse value, I'm gonna abbreviate principal inverse value, the PIV, would be 30 degrees or pi over six because that's where it's positive to begin with. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and find all of the possible values of x in this range, I would go ahead and make it easy on myself and say, well, coterminal angles, I just add two pi every time. So uh, I will call this a general solution. I would know that I could just take pi over six and add a whole circle to it, so two pi in. Now the only problem with that is we know that on our unit circle there's always going to be two places where you have the same exact ratio for a certain function because we know that all students take calculus. So if this was a positive cosine, we also know it's going to be positive down here. And it's going to give you the same reference angle, but I've got to figure out what that is. And I could say that this was negative pi over 6. The only problem is the range is asking me in between 0 and 2 pi. So if I wanted to go around all that way, I would have to go 11 pi over 6 radians. And I could add 2 pi in. And so within this range, my answer would be pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, if you wanted to just find it within that range. Okay, so let's look at one that's negative as well and a tangent. Let's make this even more tricky. So my first thing that I gotta do is try to draw this guy. And since this is tangent, we remember when we drew our inverse graphs that we were in a certain restricted range. And for three of our functions fell in within two quadrants and the other three, or other three fell in the other thing. So if you're thinking about negative inverse values, the three that are gonna fall in quadrants one and four are sine, cosecant, those two match together, and tangent. So if you're negative here, we're always gonna draw our positives in quadrant one. But if you're negative, you're gonna draw this in quadrant four. Now cosine, secant, and cotangent, the other three, those are gonna draw negative in quadrant two. So this is kind of useful to know that if you have these three trig functions, a negative inverse principle is gonna be in this one, and then in two, so two or four. So this one, since it's a tangent, we're gonna draw this in quadrant four. So, Go ahead and draw in my ratios. I know that tangent is opposite over adjacent, and you just flip flop your negatives wherever you need to. Do Pythagorean or recognize my ratio is that would be two, which would make this a 30 degree reference angle. So my principal inverse value here, my PIV, is going to be this angle. Since it's in quadrant four, we're just gonna make it negative, and we would say that my principal inverse value is negative pi over six. Now, if I wanted to find it within that range, though, remember, I have to go all the way around. And so in my general solutions, I would have to say that that was 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi in. Okay, the weird thing about tangent is it's all students take calculus. So if I'm looking for where tangent is negative, it's not negative up here, and it's not negative in quadrant 3. So my other guy is going to be right here in quadrant 2. And again, it'll be the same reference angle, so it'll be the pi over six reference angle, and so I would get five pi over six. Now, the interesting thing about this is I could write my general solution like this with the two different answers, but we also know that if these guys are falling on that 180 degree line, it might be easier for me to just write five pi over six or 11 pi over six plus pi in. So you can write both of these or just one of those. And that's trig in a nutshell.